In this presentation, we are going to look at probability distributions with R. This is an introduction to R presentation and it features undergraduate statistics and probability subject matter that you might sort of see in a university course. This question corresponds to a pen and paper question that you might answer similarly, uh, but without using R. It is estimated by a particular bank that 25% of credit customers, credit card customers pay only the minimum amount due on their credit card bill and do not pay the total amount due. Okay. 500 cre credit card customers are randomly selected. So here we have four, three exercises. What is the probability that 120 or more of the selected customers pay only the minimum amount due? What is the probability that no more than 90 of the selected customers pay only the minimum amount due? And what is the probability of more than 100 but less than 160 of the selected customers pay only the minimum amount due? Okay, now firstly, let's be very careful about how these are worded, 120 or more. Think of what that corresponds to in terms of sample points. So that starts with 120 and goes up the, all the way to 500. In the second question, it's no more than 90. Now, that is that can include 90, okay, in the interval that we're interested in. And again, more than 100, so we don't include 100 in our interval, and less than 160, okay? Now, I think you probably have guessed now that this is a binomial distribution, and X is the number of credit card customers that pay only the minimum amount due from our sample. Okay, N is the number of independent trials, it's the 500 customers, and here N is 500. P is the probability of a success, and the definition of a success here is long-winded. That's sort of part of the hazard, really, about these questions, is what constitutes an, a success and a failure. You know, there's that's not really an or question, but it's just a sort of learning how to use, use these distributions and use the information given to you. So that's what a probability of success is, that they pay only the minimum amount. And the probability of that success is 0 0.25. So here we have our x random variable, which is binomial random variable with n equal 500 and p equals 0 0.25. Now, this is how we might write it out mathematically. This is sort of conventional mathematical notation, but you're going to see this very shortly. This is not what we use when we're actually writing out our R code. So first question. What is the probability that, that 120 or more of the selected customers pay only the minimum amount due? That is the probability of X greater than, than, greater than or equal to 120. Now, you have to recall that this is a bin, uh, the binomial distribution is a discrete distribution. So what we can do is look at what the complement is and calculate that. The complement, the complement is a probability of X less than or equal to 119. Okay, remember it's a discrete distribution, so that is very important. Okay, the, the probability distribution is a binomial distribution, which it means it's a discrete distribution, so that is how we would state the complements of each other. Okay, so this is what we're going to calculate 1 minus the probability of x less than or equal to 119. Okay, now the command here is as follows 1 minus p for cumulative uh, probability, the cumulative distribution function, in fact, binome for the binomial distribution, X, the value we're interested in was 119. Now, previously I said that n is 500 and p equals 0 0.25. Well, the syntax for you dealing with the binomial distribution in R is size, that corresponds to n, and prob, that corresponds to p, equals 0 0.25. Okay, so it's just to differentiate one probability distribution from the other so that they have their own very distinct syntax. Okay, that helps a lot, as much as possible. It's not a total, totally uh, satisfactory answer, but it's just to sort of for the sake of clarity, size equals and prob equals. So just remember that. And don't type in n equals and p equals and wonder why you're stuck. So anyway, the probability of that is 0 0.7128. Okay, we can correspond can find the corresponding values by looking at p binome 119 size equals 500 and the probability equals 0 0.25 and add in lower equals false okay 
So that chorus that cal- calculates essentially the, the complementary probability of that. Okay, that cal- cal- calculates the probability of x greater than one hundred nineteen, but not including one hundred nineteen in that ser- in that set of sample points that it will calculate the value for. So that's an important thing to remember. Okay, so just that's the probability of x greater than one hundred nineteen, but that doesn't include one hundred nineteen in that interval. What is the probability that no more than ninety? Okay, no more than ninety. So we include 90 in our interval of the selected customers pay only the minimum amount due. This is a very straightforward, okay? And it helps just the way the question was worded, no more than 90. So in this case, it's very straightforward. Uh, 1 to 90 and everything in that interval from 1 to 90. Or actually, 0 to 90, actually, I should say. P by norm, 90. Size equals 500. Probability equals 0 0.25. So it's actually a very small probability. We'll sort of get more insight into that shortly so it is 0 0.000116 so it's almost one sixth of a or one eighth of a percent okay so one in 800 almost probably more than that you can ch check it out yourselves okay just actually i will just mar remark upon argument matching so you just notice here that I have p binome 90, uh, 500, and 0 0.25. I don't specify size equals or prob equals. So when I leave them out, it just the locations indicate to R what this value means. So argument matching is that the second item co should correspond to size, and the third item should correspond to probability. Okay, so you don't actually necessarily have to write them in. I think it is a good idea to write them in. But, you know, it's not absolutely necessary when you're just typing it out and want to get values for yourself. And again, you get the same number there, 0 0.0001159088. Just a quick pause to fix an error there. Now I'm all good. Exercise 3. What is the probability that more than 100, so more than 100, not including 100, but less than 160, Okay, so not including 160 of the selected customers pay only the minimum amount due. So the sample points we are interested in are 101 to 159. Okay, so first off, we calculate the probability of being less than or equal to 159. Okay, and then from that, we subtract the probability of the sample points being between 0 and 100. So less than or equal to 100. So this chops out anything less than 100 from our probability. Okay. And there is our answer. 0 0.9948. So actually most of them. That sort of really makes sense really. Okay. Now. Just as a quick remark, what we'll do is just get a sense of the distribution by calculating quantiles. So quantiles are essentially medians, first quartiles, third quartiles, so on. Okay. So here we want to calculate, make a just rough guess of what 50% of the values should be less than 50% of the values of X. So Q binom, just put in our probability there, that's our quantile. Or percentile essentially 50 percent percentile size equals 500 probability equals 0 0.25 there we get 1.25 which is also what we would expect for the mean okay not necessarily defined that the median and the mean are equal to each other but it will happen in a lot of cases first quartile again same thing 0 0.25 the 25th percentile and we get 118 Okay, and the third quartile, 0 0.75. Again, P, Q binome in both cases. Okay, and there it's 131. So roughly, we expect 50% of the values of X to be between 118 and 131. There or thereabouts. We don't really, we're not really nailing that out down as a, uh, a solid interval but it just gives us a rough guess about what we should expect just to compare and contrast with that last range of values there 101 to 159 that 50 percent will correspond to 118 and 131 okay we'll leave it there